Okay, I see a couple of you have jumped on. Say hello. Hello, Susie. Hi, Terry. Hey, Angela. All right. I'm going to switch my phone over so I can see everything you guys are saying. So much exciting news. Oops. Dropping stuff all over my desk. Hello, Karen. Hello, Mary. Hello, everybody. Okay. Hi, Susie. I am glad to have caught you. <laughs> Oh, Karen, I'm glad to hear that. Hello, Sandy K. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So a lot of exciting stuff coming this month. Um, I will give you guys a couple of sneak peeks. How's that sound? Hi, Roberta. Hi, Linda. Okay, so... First of all, if you have a chance to um, go to a stamp show and Blue Night Rubber Stamps is at the stamp show, they are now carrying not one, but two sets of pan pastels. So um, I'm going to play around with them today. I got to tell you guys, I fell in love with them. Um, th these are not a new product. They have been out in it for professional artists to use. Um, and... Um, I saw Lynn using them on some of her cards, who's the owner of Blue Knight Rubber Stamps, and I thought, no, let me try. Let me reach out to the manufacturer. And then I found out the manufacturer is literally like a couple towns away from me, like 20 minutes, maybe half hour. And I was like, ooh, it's a local town, even better. So anyway, what Pan Pastels are, if you haven't seen my videos before on them, and again, I'm just learning to use them so I am no professional artist but they are really soft finely milled pigment pastel okay and I just keep saying it's it's like using a paint but there's no mess it's so easy to clean up it's so easy to blend um Susie you gotta go you gotta go you gotta go hi Melanie so I mean you you literally just pick up this pigment and it's so bright and so concentrated and it just goes down. I mean, it literally goes down like a paint, but there's no mess, no fuss. It's easy to clean up. It's easy to erase. It's easy to blend. And I have fallen in love with them. I'm like super excited. Okay. <laughs> so I reached out to Lynn and I said, hey, Lynn. You know, all these years I've been going to these stamping shows. I've never seen anybody demonstrate them. And here you're using them all the time. Why don't you contact the distributor and see if um, maybe, you know, they you can sell them, right? So not only did that happen in a very quick time a period, like in the last couple weeks, um, but I want to show you guys the two palettes that are coming out. I have most of the colors only because I got anxious and I had to go out and buy them. Um, and I won't be going to a stamp show again until this fall. So I will t um, look up here what it comes with and tell you guys. And they will be on the website any day now. I know they're working on getting them up there. So let me find them and tell you what's on there. Do, do, do. Okay. So uh, I know it's hard to see through my phone. These are the two sets. The first set is called Sunrise Sunset, and that's going to be your warm color. So it's going to have permanent red, orange, uh, dire, dire light yellow, magenta, and then I don't have burnt sienna, which is a darker brown, and red iron oxide, which is a darker red. So uh, warm colors, so you're going to get uh, seven colors. There's another one. I think it's white, maybe. Um, you're getting one more other color with that. I think it's the white. And then you're going to get, yeah, seven past, past colors. You get the pastel tray. You get the beginner's starter kit. So you're going to get the soft sponge bar, this one. You're going to get uh, two knife covers. Where'd my knife go? I was just playing with it. Here we go. And you're going to get the knife. So you're going, uh, uh, sorry, two of the knife covers with the knife, and you're going to get an angled slice sponge. 
which I think it's like this, but it's the square one. So yes, you're going to get the tray. You're going to get seven colors and you're going to get some of these uh, softy tools to uh, work with in moving your colors around. So very nice setup. I can tell you normally the tray is $10. Normally the pan pastels are around $7 each. So for the value, I think they are going to be $49.99 at the store. You're saving like 20 bucks um, by getting it in the kit. The second colors are called day and night. And in that set, you're going to get phthalo blue, which is this darker blue. You're going to get uh, ultramarine blue, which I don't have, which is kind of a, a combination between blue and purple. Uh, turquoise, which is this color. The violet, which is this color. Chromium oxide green, which is this color. And then you're also going to get the black and the white with that. So two different uh, color palettes that you're that are going to be out there. Again, look at how you use your colors. I'm sure that you already know you know, if you do like sunsets or evening, I don't know, um, you know, and buy or get both, whatever you want to do. But I just couldn't wait. And um, I bought all of them already. <laughs> um, and then I have some other colors in a different tray here. I picked up some of the um, pearlescent white. I got a lighter blue. I got a darker blue. I got some pinks and yellows and different colors here and a darker brown. And I, I got the colorless blender. I do like the colorless blender. So um, I don't have a ton of information except that I know that she's already got them. They're going to be at shows and they're going to have make and takes. So you can try them out for free um, before you commit to anything. Um, and that's going to be at Blue Night Rubber Stamps booth um in any of your local shows um carolyn asks who makes them they are made by a company called color i don't want to say it wrong color fin um and like i said they are their um headquarters i believe is in kutztown pennsylvania which is not too far from me um and I believe the kits are going to be $49.99. And like I said, you're going to get the tray, the lid, the seven colors. And when you have it in the tray, it just makes it easier. You only have to keep one lid. Um, they do not fall out of the tray. So um, you just keep them in there. And I have my other lid somewhere, but you just keep one lid just so you can move them around if you ever need to. It's, and these trays are nice and thin, so they're easy to slide in the, the desk or drawer or wherever you need to, to put them. Um, <clears throat> Mary, I don't know if she is going to be able to ship them to Canada. I will find out for you. Um, I do use a fixative, Linda. I'll show you the fixative that I use. I've heard people use hairspray. I'll show you my little bottle here. You don't have to buy anything special, whatever fixative you have. Um, this is from Krylon. This is called Shortcuts. It's a tiny little can. And I just put it in a spray box and I spritz this over it. All right. So let's uh, let's make a card. Play around with these things and see what we can get. Um, okay. So I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz platform. I want to do... Oh, we don't, we're not ready for this yet. My thought was, and I haven't made this yet, I want to use this mountain scene. This is called Mountains with Mist and Forest. This is from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. And then I just got these cute little balloons. Um, I did not film a video, but I will sneak peek you guys. Look at this. Whee! So all I did was uh, I did the little cloud stencil on the background here. That is also Blue Night Rubber Stamps uh, cloud stencil on blue paper. I used white pigment ink. And then I colored these um, balloons in. I am loving these new Arteza Twee markers. I've been playing around with them. And they blend so nicely. So I use them to color in. And they're so bright. Um, I like those over the brush markers, honestly. Um, and I colored the balloons in and... 
I have my little balloon going up. Anyway, so I got just got these balloons. And um, I was thinking, what if we did a balloon in the background, stamp this out, and then colored this in? Should we do that? I think that should be pretty easy, and we should be able to manage that, right? Okay. Um, Susie, use a fixative on them because they are a finely milled... Um, I don't want to call it a pigment powder because it's not a pigment powder. It's pastels. It's finely milled pastels, um, but they're very highly concentrated in color. And so if you don't set them, um, the colors could rub off. So I have some masking paper. I'm just using Inka Dinka Do masking paper. And you always want to stamp on the white, on the white side. And I want to use sort of a smaller medium size balloon because I don't want it to look like the balloons in the mountains. So I'm going to use a, a smaller one. We'll use this guy here, which I believe is this one and something easy to color. So we're just going to stamp this some VersaFine Claire ink. I'm off tomorrow. Miss Leah has, um, it's not kindergarten graduation, but it's some kind of show performance they're going to put on. So I'll be going to that. I'm kind of excited. She's been singing around the house all week. So I know she's excited. And then she only has a couple more half days and she's done with school. And these balloons are very easy to cut out. And when you are cutting a image that you're going to use as a mask, you want to cut inside the line. So you can see I've already cut this balloon. See that black? You want that. You want to cut inside the stamped area because otherwise when you go to stamp over your masked image, there will be a halo around your masked image and you don't want that. So you want to get as tightly as you can inside normally when we cut out we want to leave a little white area but um, when it comes to masking you do not and these masks um, hold up for a couple of uses a little longer than my post-it tape does that tiny little balloon take some precision here And I did do one earlier, but it was too big. And I thought, you know, some of you might have questions about masking. So I want to show you how I do it. Okay, so you can see here, I have cut, you can see the black line. I've cut inside the black line, okay? Now we have our little mask. I do have my little Tim Holtz, big Tim Holtz platform. And I have the mountain already ready to stamp, except there's something on the stamp. <clears throat> All right, so I am going to very quickly stamp my little balloon. Was it this one? I can't remember which one it was now. <laughs> yes. I put him away too soon. Got anxious. All right. And I'm going to stamp him kind of off into the skyline here. I may not even need to mask because I think the stamp is down low enough, but it doesn't hurt. Overstamped. All right, mono eraser to the rescue. All right. Thank you, Karen. I have to get my nails done for work, but I think about you guys too. One of my friends said today at work that they look like mermaid nails because this is kind of like holographic and then it's like this 
teal color. Tina has been doing my nails for like forever. In fact, her daughter is, I think, eight and she's very tall. So Tina has been very generous in giving Leah um, her daughter's hand-me-down clothes. And Leah, in turn, gives them. I work with a lady who has three daughters. Um, and so Leah, in turn, has learned to donate her clothes as well. Okay, now we got the mask off. I'm going to cover up our little image just for safekeeping. All right, now I'm ready to stamp. So I am just going to use uh, my favorite Versamark, Versamark Claire black ink. This stamp is very detailed in its little images here. So it might take a couple of inkings. Very easy to color though. I think I colored this before in chalk or distress oxides maybe. All right, let's see how this turns out. Oh, missed the middle. See, I didn't even need to mask. Um, I feel like my paper moved. It did move. Now! Now we have to start over again. All right. I know you guys can't tell, but my paper moved, and it is a double stamped image. So it's not your TV screens or your phone's not focusing. It's because I moved. So we're going to flip this over, and we're going to do it again. This is why I don't edit my videos, because this happens to all of us. Okay, less jiggling, more up and down stamping, Nance. Probably less talking would help. Oh, that's pretty darn good. Do I risk a second stamping? Yes. My trees need to be a little darker. We're going to do one more. Ooh, that's good. And turns out we don't even need to mask. I thought that this was going to end up being in the area, I was wrong. Let me take my mask back. You can't have it, mine. And I keep my masks on the storage sheet. And so to prevent over stamp stamping, I have a little extra rubber to trim here. So that way, when I ink it up this time, there won't be extra ink on the side of my balloon. There we go. A little stamp surgery. Ta-da! Gee, Nance, you could have did that in the first five minutes of the video. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to get our little pan pastels out. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way real quick here. My desk is big, but it's not that big. I try to clean up as I go, so that way, number one, I don't lose any stamps, but number two, I have room to move around, and number three, then I don't feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we craft and everything gets messy, and we lose stuff, and we feel overwhelmed, and so I try to put away 
as I go. So, and what's nice is these ha they have these little backer sheets. So, put my stamp back on there and I have this little guide that I can look at and see how I want to color everything. Okay. And I'm just going to use these colors. I'm going to try not to go into the other colors. And I hope I am seeing all of your chats. Oh, I may have to go into one other color. And I'll show that one in a minute. Not trying to cheat, but I am a little cheating. Oh, oh, I still need my mask. And I'll tell you why. Because we got to do the sky. Butterfly in the sky. How many of you guys watch Reading Rainbow? That was my favorite show when I was a kid. And you got to holler at me if I go off camera because I can't always see what I'm doing. All right. I'm going to start with the sky. And I'm going to use the lovely cloud stencil. All right. I'm breaking my promise. I'm opening this other tray. <clears throat> Might dip into some of these colors here. And I have a little paper towel off to the side. Actually, Leah and I were using this same paper towel to do watercoloring in the last video. And I just let it dry out and didn't throw it away. So we're going to reuse it. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Can you guys see me okay? How's the lighting? Is it too dark? <clears throat> and I'm going to go in with the turquoise. And I'm going to tap a little bit of it off. And then go into the cloud stencil. Nice fluffy clouds. Do I need to zoom in, zoom out, make it brighter, make it darker? I don't know if I can zoom in. Well, I can move the camera down a little bit. A little bit of turquoise. And I'm... Barely touching that. I mean, it's just on the tippy corner of the sponge there. And then I tap a little bit of that off and go back in. And again, I masked off my balloon because I don't want my balloon to turn into a cloud. Now we're going to move stencil down over here and I'm angling it. This stencil is so easy. I like that it has the little clouds and it has the big fluffy clouds on the other end. So I just have to move it around. And I like the fact that it's long enough that it fits across my page without me having to work it too much. Okay, so here is my fluffy cloud scene. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's coming up very dark on my end. Okay, now for the rest, it's just dip into some colors and shade it in. So I'm going to use my little soft brush here. You're going to get one of these, and I believe you get two of these little socks, and they just slide on. And when you're using this, you want to use it left to right. You don't want to go up and down because you don't want this to pull off of here, off of the knife. So you want to use it in a side-to-side -side motion. So I'm going to go a little bit into the green. There you can see. Very nice dark green. And all I'm going to do is just shade right over my trees. So easy. Terry says, come down a little. Okay, Terry, here we go. Hold on. Don't anybody get car sick. How's that? Is that a little better?
Another thing I like about these is if you put too much color down, you don't like where you've put it, it's erasable. So we just grab an eraser. Comes right off. Very forgiving, easy to use. And artists have been hiding this from us. See, the trees are now green. The sky is cloudy. If I think there is too much blue in my sky, go in and erase some of that. Very, very easy to do. Okay, so now we want to do our mountains. There's really only a couple colors in the mountains. It's really not too bad. Um, I'm going to continue with the green, I think. Actually, I am going to use some of these other colors. I'm going to use this darker brown. There is a brown in the kit. I got a different color brown. So I would use the brown in the kit when you get it. I didn't know the colors they were going to come out with when I ordered mine. Just a little bit of brown right there. Very easy to do. And I will show this a little closer. And all I'm doing to wipe my colors off is just rubbing them on a paper towel or rubbing it on scrap paper. Very easy to clean that off. Yes, it stains, but you're not transferring any color. Okay, let's see. What else do we want to use? I have this kind of navy blue. I think I'll use a little bit of that. Oh, I think it's gray. Payne's gray, I think it's called. To me, it looks navy blue. Payne's gray. Not really gray. It's like a navy. Doesn't this stamp make it look like I'm a really good artist? I'm just really good at coloring. <laughs> okay. And now I think I will go in with this little bit darker blue. This may be a mistake. We'll see in a minute. And just pulling that color down from the top down. Very easy to blend and pull that color down. I'm going to add a tiny hint of the violet to darken it up a little bit. That might be too much violet. We'll see. All right, and then into all of that, I'm going to go back in and add some more of the green. Yes, now I have like this kind of darkish gray with this little tint of purple. That green and purple really do make like a nice dark shade of gray. And I'll hold it up in a second so you guys can see. Ooh, that came out better than I anticipated. Whew, I was sweating it there. When you do a live and you do it unprepared, you never know what you're going to get. Ooh, this is pretty. Okay, that's it. I'm done coloring. That's how easy it was. I'm going to take my eraser. I don't really need to clean this up because I'm going to cut the panel down to fit. But I just want to show you guys again how easy it is. If you wanted to keep it this way and just erase out any of that extra pastel, comes right out.
Ah, we forgot to color the balloon. Here, I thought it was done. Let me show you guys this. So we have the cloudy sky, and I, it's very light blue, but it is very cloudy looking. And then I mix the blue, the purple, and the green. So this is kind of, um, it's a gray with a little bit of a violet undertone. And then this was the Payne's gray, which actually was like a navy. And then down here I did the brown and then I did the green on the trees. This is just regular Nina Solar White, the normal stamping paper that I used. That I use. Okay, so now what should we do for our balloon? Should we continue with the pastels or should we go in with markers or color pencils? Because that's what's fun about these is you don't have to stick to one medium. If you want to mix it up with markers, if you want to mix it up with color pencils, if you want to do watercolor markers or Copic markers, whatever you want to use, your imagination is the only thing limiting you. I think we're going to try another experiment here. So I have these paper stubs that I use for coloring with color pencils. Let's see how they work with the pan pastels. And I think we're going to make this balloon pop. Let's do a, let's do a red balloon. I mean, we need some color on here, right? So I'm just going to dip into my pan pastel. Ooh, that's a lot of color. I'm very barely touching that color. Hi, Janie. He is upstairs. She's probably asleep on the couch, actually. It's been quiet for quite a while. Okay, there's our balloon and our misty mountain, our balloon gracefully flying over it. And it's all colored in with pan pastels. And I hope the camera is picking up on the different shades of colors here because there are definitely... Several different shades of colors here. I know it might not be. Right, Linda? I didn't try that before. This is my first time trying that with you guys. And if you think, okay, it's too light. You want to darken it up. You just go back in. Add some more. I really like how it just blends in and really looks seamless. It's 
So easy to do. These are really my new favorite toy here. Hello, Suzette. What do you guys think? Any questions about anything? So then what I would do here um, is if I ha uh, wanted a stamp a sentiment, let's pick a sentiment out real quick. And I'll show you guys how I finish this off. Super easy to do. There are fireworks going off outside my door. I don't know why. Somebody's having a party. Hey, Suzette, how's your evening going? And for those of you who are not on my Facebook or Instagram, we're trying to get to 300. We're at like 280 or something like that on both of them. So we just want to hit 300. We are close to 9,000 on our YouTube channel. So thank you guys for that. Um, super excited to get to 9,000. I'm like already looking around and saying, Leah, remember next time we go to the store, we need to get some stuff for a giveaway. So let's see here. I have some great ideas sitting on my desk. You guys, first of all, I have right there. You guys can't see, but I have, um, Two new releases coming from Kitchen Sink Stamps that I'm super excited about. Very close to my heart. When you guys see them, you'll understand why. Um, one is June, which I think we're going to be releasing next week. And then one is for July, which will be after Junkie Fest. And then I have a whole bunch of these Blue Night Rubber stamps out. And I'm not going to show you... There are stamps that you've seen before, but I have certain themes in mind that I want to do with them. And I think you will like how I kind of thought outside the box in them. So I'm excited to uh, make some cards and show those with you. I do have some videos um, that I did film and they're going to be posting in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, I'll put the little link um, in the corner for you. And then when that pops up, click that. And if you click the little bell, it'll give you a notification when I have posted a new video or when I've gone live. Um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. Just looking for some good sentiments to put on here. It's Nancy Stamps 15 right here. And if you want me to follow you back, just type in their FB in the comments on it and I'll follow you guys back. I know some of the pages are private and I don't want to infringe on anybody. I'm reading your comments here. It says, farewell sentiment or cross the miles. Yes, let's see what we got here. Janie, it's just easier for me to do lives because you guys are here and can talk to me and tell me if it looks good, if it doesn't look good, what you like, what you don't like. You can ask me questions. And I like interacting with you guys and talking to you guys. And when I film... Then I have to upload it. Then I have to make sure it's not upside down. And it's honestly, it's just harder to film it and not edit it, but make sure that it gets posted correctly. Where this way I can answer all you guys' questions. And then you guys know a few minutes after we are done here, I'll post all the links for everything for you. Do, do, do. How about this? May your day be filled with friends, family, love, and laughter. Let's see here. Let's see what else we have. It is, Janie. I like talking to you guys. I, I don't have very many crafty friends in real life. You guys are my friends. <laughs> I liked this sentiment off of the, the new release. It says, don't look back. You're not headed that way. But I think for this card, like a nice happy birthday card or hello or thinking of you. I'm trying to dig out my sentiments here. You know, and I really appreciate... 
Blue Knight rubber stamps and kitchen sink stamps sending me the stamps because some of these stamps, honestly, I don't know that I would have purchased them. You get stuck in our own habits. So I would have bought butterflies and I would have had 80 million butterfly stamps. And I've done the same thing with the butterflies. So when they send me stamp sets like this, it really gets my wheels turning and I get to think outside the box. So when you go to these stamping shows, you're automatically, yes, going to be attracted to what you like. Like in my case, butterflies, like uh, my friend Kim, she's totally into Tim Holtz and grungy stuff. So um, sometimes you got to do a make and take and sit down and look at something and say, I never would have purchased that. And now I see all the possibilities open up. <laughs> right, right. So when they send me these and they say, hey, go try making a card. I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to come up with here, but I'll come up with something. And um, this set from Kitchen Sink Stamps is totally up my alley. And I, I, I'm i like so happy, but I love when um, like Blue Knight Rubber Stamps, they don't, she doesn't tell you what she's sending you. She just sends it to you and then you figure it out. So I did just get this balloon set and I thought, what am I going to do with balloons? And for those of you just joining us, I did this, but I didn't film it. So I used that same cloud stencil and I did uh, pigment ink over blue card. And then I colored these little balloons out. And these two are stuck down. And then this one, I just did a little slider. And let me tell you what my little slider is. You're not going to believe what it is. It's double stick uh, foam adhesive on the back. It's just the foam strips from Stampin' Up. And on the back side here is a button. So I put a foam dot and a regular shirt button. I don't think the camera is going to pick it up. But I put a foam dot and a regular shirt button behind there. And that's what the slider is. I didn't buy anything special to make the slider. Hello, D. So I made that with the balloons too. But I, I'm like, all of these ideas popping up with these balloons. I'm like, oh, I can do this with the balloons. I can do that with the balloons. I never would have bought these balloons, but she sent them to me, and now I, I'm loving the balloons. Janie, it is not crashing. It's going up. <laughs> Actually, Janie, what I was thinking was tying a thread to the top, like an invisible thread to the top, and then when it's on the card, when you open the card, I don't have a card in front of me. When you... um. You know, when you open the card, the balloon would, you know, go down. For when the card is closed, it would be up. And then when you go to open the card, the balloon would move. Because I did think about that. It does look like the balloon is <laughs> flying down. <laughs> it's fun, though. It's cute. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do for sentiment. I think I'll do this one. May your day be filled with friends. I'll just put happy birthday. And then on the inside put, may your day be filled with friends, family, love, and laughter. So we'll just stamp out the happy birthday for now. And hopefully I'll stamp it straight. Been a crooked stamper here lately. not too bad. Okay. Pretty happy with that. And then I'll show you guys how I finish it off. I have my handy dandy fancy spritz box here, which is just an old, my favorite things box. And you can see it's been spritzed in lovingly. And I just put my card in there and then I get that spray. Do this in a well ventilated area, please. Some short bursts, 
and that will seal it in. And so the recipient won't have to worry about rubbing their fingers and getting pastels all over everything. And then I would cut it down and mount it on a card front. And then we are done. Hello, Tracy, darling. Tracy, I am playing with Blue Night Rubber Stamps and some new pan pastels. Tracy is the guest designer for this month at Blue Night Rubber Stamps. So check out Blue Night Rubber Stamps blog. And I think Tracy is also going to be posting some videos. So if you are not subscribed, Tracy Schultz at YouTube, please go check her out. Tracy says her first card goes up Saturday. That's all I got for you guys tonight. Again, if you're not following me on um, Facebook or Instagram, this is where this comes into play. So I would make this into a card once it's done drying, cut it down, put it on a nice card, and then I would post a picture on Facebook and Instagram so you guys can see the final results of everything. Um, trying to get both of those up to 300. And then we have almost 9,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I cannot believe it. And so I will be gathering up some things to do a giveaway once we get to 9,000. So there we go. If you guys have any questions about anything I used, Post them down below for those of you who didn't catch this live. I will be linking everything. Again, um, the stamp sets that I use, this sentiment came from best, best Wishes from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Um, we use the Mountains with Mist and Forest stamp for the background. We use the Hot Air Balloons for the Hot Air Balloon, which uh, I can't find right now. There we go. Hot air balloons, and you get all of these sizes of balloons. We used masking paper, and of course, we use the new pan pastels, which are being carried now by Blue Night Rubber Stamps. You have a warm and a cool set. I have mine mixed up, um, but you can pick them up at Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Soon they will have them on the website. Right now they are out traveling the country at stamp shows and you can pick that up and it'll come with the seven colors. It'll come with the softy tools. It will come with the palette and the cover, the case on the, the palette. So a very, very good value. I can tell you um, that for sure. I've done my shopping. I've done my homework and it is a good value. And that's all I have for today. Thank you guys. Please head on over to Tracy Schultz on YouTube. It is just Tracy Schultz, right, Tracy? Like, there's no special numbers or anything, right? And uh, join her. She'll be posting some things for Blue Night Rubber Stamps as well. But I appreciate every single one of you watching. If you like this video, I do appreciate your thumbs up, please. Thumbs up. Um, and that lets me know that you like these kinds of videos. And as always, keep on stamping. Good night. Bye-bye.